How good do you think Ohio State's defense will be in 2021? How much do you think they'll improve? Do you think that it's going to be a long uphill climb for Jim Knowles and his new defensive staff? Or do you think that the transition is going to be quick, smooth, easy, and Ohio State will have a great to elite defense this coming season? Or do you think it's going to be somewhere in the middle? Let me know down in the comments below. This is what we're talking about today. We're talking about Ohio State's defense. I talked about their offense a few days ago, probably closer to like one or two weeks ago, I'm thinking two weeks ago, but today is about the defense. The offense this past season was phenomenal. It was amazing. It was number one in scoring, in efficiency, according to ESPN, and I think it was top three in total offense, which is total yards per game. It was an amazing unit, and even though you're losing a lot of production at wide receiver and O-line, you're returning the majority of your production. You're starting running back, starting QB, one of your starting wide receivers who might have been the best wide receiver, and you're returning the majority of your starting offensive linemen from what I can understand, though I think that unit will look different because the four-tackle system is going to be no longer in place. But yeah, the offense is going to reload. That's basically a given. The defense, the defense does return quite a bit of pieces, but the defense has basically had its moments where it is completely busted for two years in a row now. In 2020, it was the secondary. The secondary was just this, this monstrosity, allowing Michael Penix to almost lead Indiana to a comeback allowing Mac Jones and Devonta Smith to just waltz their way into the end zone. And even in their wins, some of their bigger wins against Clemson and other teams, they still had problems defending better wide receiver and QB duos. In 2021, the secondary improved, despite the fact that it was not at an elite level, I would say. It certainly improved, though. The linebacker play and the defensive line play, though stats might tell you otherwise, did very rapidly regress. The defensive line and linebacker cores had massive fits against teams who could run high-power run offenses, especially Cough, Oregon, and Michigan. Those two teams who have great running back duos or had them in 2021 as Travis Dye transferred to USC. C.J. Verdell and Travis Dye Amazing running back duo. If Verdell wasn't hurt, you could probably argue that Oregon might have had a better season. Same thing with if Mario Cristobal wasn't distracted by the Miami offer, maybe they wouldn't have gotten blown out by Utah twice in a row. And then there was Michigan. Michigan, Hassan Haskins, Blake Corum, they had the best O-line in the nation according to the Joe Moore Award, and Oregon had a very solid O-line too. Mario Cristobal just his teams at Oregon, solid offensive line play. Absolutely pristine, solid offensive line play. Michigan this past season had one, probably their best offensive line in the Jim Harbaugh era. So against good offensive lines and good run games and quarterbacks who could be competent, again, Ohio State's pass defense this season, I think was, or this past season, was better than their run defense they would mightily struggle against offenses that weren't one-dimensional and had great running games and good offensive lines. And even if they didn't have great offensive lines, they struggled against teams that had competent QBs and competent playmakers and explosive playmakers. Look at the Nebraska and Penn State games. Nebraska was one of the more explosive offenses in the country, which is shocking because of how inconsistent they were, but when they when they put plays together, they were one of the more explosive offenses in the country. And Ohio State allowed two big pass plays that kept Nebraska in the game. And then against Penn State, Sean Clifford had one of the Big Ten's worst offensive lines and worst run games along with him, and he, and somewhat of the Penn State run game, but a lot of it was Jahan Dotson, kept Penn State in that game, and Ohio State's defense couldn't exactly close them out. So 
it's not all the defense's fault that some of these things in 2021 happened. The offense, along with the defense, was pretty green, and you saw that in experience too against tougher, more experienced units. But now entering 2022, you no longer have a lot of green players because more of your production this year returns than it did in 2021. In 2021, someone um, commented this statistic in one of my Ohio State videos. In 2021, Ohio State was one of the worst teams by returning production. In 2022, they're now top 50, I think maybe even top 25. And I think that's going to be a very important statistic to look back on. Because I think that inexperience and green players, I think, plagued Ohio State in some of their bigger games. At least that's just my opinion. But now you have Jim Knowles coming in from Oklahoma State. And Jim Knowles, the interesting thing about him is he led one of the greatest defenses probably in Oklahoma State history this past season. They led the nation in sacks, but it took him four years to get there. And the question is, Ohio State obviously has a lot more talent, raw talent, a lot more upside, less downside by talent than Oklahoma State does. So the question is, how long is it going to take Jim Knowles to instill a proper defense, to instill great fundamentals, to repair the damage that was done to Ohio State's defensive unit since the 2020 season? I really don't know the answer to that question. I think it I don't think it will take him 4 years by any stretch of the imagination. It's just my opinion. And I think that having the raw talent there and having better assistant coaches will certainly help him. I mean, you have Larry Johnson and pardon me for forgetting some of these names, but you have Cincinnati's cornerbacks coach coming in. You have a Jacksonville Jaguars safeties coach coming in. I mean, their names, which again, I don't remember at this time, but the Cincinnati cornerbacks coach coached Kobe Bryant and Sauce Gardner, which was one of the best cornerback duos in the nation at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's defensive staff this past season was legit, so getting him from Cincinnati to come to Ohio State is a huge boost, and you have Denzel Burke, Cameron Brown, and now Tanner McAllister, who are going to be trained by one of the better cornerbacks coaches in the country and then you can get Ronnie Hickman and Josh Proctor even better trained by the coach from the Jaguars so you have an upgraded staff that is training a secondary that improved off of a down year in 2020 Larry Johnson is still here I think again I've said this a few times he's nearing the point of retirement but he's still able to recruit I think he's still able to develop. You have JT Tui Malau and Jack Sawyer on that line. And Jim Knowles, along with being the linebackers coach, has been working with Larry Johnson at D-line, along with Larry Johnson working at linebackers. They kind of have shared that role at times, which I think is nice because a front seven at moments will function as one unit instead of just a defensive line and linebacker core. Jim Knowles' defense is complex. He runs a 4-2-5, and Ohio State, I think, I don't think they ran that this past season. They ran something different, and so maybe it will take him a while to install this new system and such, but I think with the raw talent here, the amount of returning starters, I think that by 2023, you should know how this hire is going to go, and I think it will go well. I don't think Ohio State is going to have this top 10 defense. It's possible because of how good of a coordinator Jim Knowles is. I think the staff is one of the best staffs in the country defensively, like probably a top 10, top 5 staff on defense. But at the same time, great things take time to build. He runs a more complex system than a lot of other teams do. You do have that talent, though, so I'd be looking in that top 25 to top 15 range for defense with uh, with much improved fundamentals, like tackling, plugging in your the gaps that you're assigned to plug, which was a problem, again, against Oregon and Michigan when both of those teams would bust out for 
massive runs, not on not on just the outside, but up the middle. Like the Blake Corum run in the third quarter against Ohio State, the C.J. Verdell run again in the third quarter against Ohio State. A lot of that was because of missed, missed plugs in the line that the linebackers were supposed to plug, and they missed it or got there too late, got there too early, and boom, running back gone either into the end zone in Verdell's case or into the red zone in Corum's case. So I think that it will take more than a year, but I think you're going to see immediate results. Better fundamentals. The defense, while complex, is also a system that is meant to confuse and intimidate offenses, and there have been reports of that coming out from Columbus that Jim Knowles' defense is having even some of the better offensive coaches in the country scratching their heads. Like, like how, like how do we oppose this? Because complex systems, when you master it correctly, can really produce results that, results that are elite and results that will intimidate even the best offenses in the country. The projected lineup for this defense currently, using a variety of different sources— rlads.com, a few Buckeye websites, all meshing it together. At defensive end, you have JT Tuimalau and Zach Harrison. Zach Harrison, to me, seems like more of a late bloomer kind of guy. He has not had the breakout year that a lot of people, myself included, have thought that he should have had already. But it's never too late, I guess is what you have to say in regards to him. Maybe this new system will help him out, new, some new coaching. JT Tuimalau, though, I'm going to probably spend a minute on him here. He's an absolute beast, and he got some playing time already this past season, got a few sacks, a few tackles. He is an absolute monster. He was a part of Ohio State's recruiting class in their 2021 recruiting class, I think, that was by average recruit ranking. I think the best ever, best ever by average recruit ranking. It was an insane class. You got Trevion Henderson in that class. You got Quinn Ewers. I think you got Kyle McCord in that class. You had an offensive lineman whose name I forget, an offensive guard. You had Jack Sawyer. It was a phenomenal class, and he was a part of that unit, one of their best players in that class. And he's showing it on the field. He's showing it in practice. He is going to be a lethal threat, a lethal presence off of the edge this coming season. And I think that you're going to get Jack Sawyer playing in this position as well. I think that he will be one of the better edge rushers in the Big Ten, despite being kind of a backup or a guy who doesn't get the most playing time at this position. Currently, he's listed second on the depth chart at the edge position. I see, or at least I hear reports and read that he is kind of being used like in a linebacker edge hybrid. I think still he's going to be one of the best defensive ends in the Big Ten. He's going to be a lethal presence, and he's going to show the raw potential, that raw five-star potential that he had coming out of high school. Same thing with JT Tuimalau. At defensive tackle, you have Teron Vincent and Jerron Cage. Obviously, Haskell Garrett is off to the NFL really good defensive tackle. Jerron Cage is probably at this point known for the guy who recovered Clifford's fumble and returned it to the end zone for a scoop and score, which was a very electrifying moment because I saw that on live TV. Defensive tackle, I think, will be a unit that is solid. It's obviously not going to be, in my opinion, what the defensive line is known for. It's not really ever been that way under Larry Johnson. Chase Young, Nick, and Joey Bosa were all defensive ends. They were not defensive tackles, but this unit should still be pretty solid, one of the better defensive tackle units in the Big Ten. Teron Vincent and Jerron Cage should be able to do enough of their job to help stop the run. I think this rush defense will improve this season for Ohio State. They'll also be able to get pressure. One thing that Ohio State's D-tackles were really good at compared to a lot of other Big Ten teams was actually being able to get pressure at points. Again, rush defense was a problem, but Ohio State against certain teams was able to still find ways to get sacks. 
I think all around, not just at edge, but at defensive tackle, you're going to see improvement at pass rush too, along with run defense. At linebacker, which I think is going to be the biggest weakness of this defense just because of the lack of raw talent here and of how busted it looked this past season, not saying these guys aren't good people. That's not what this is. This is talking about an opinion on the defense, the strengths and weaknesses of it. While defensive end and I would probably say cornerback are the biggest strengths of this defense, I would say linebacker is probably the biggest weakness. It's not a bad unit. By linebacker, it's probably middle of the road or maybe slightly above average or below average. I'd say average in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten has a plethora of deep running back rooms. Nebraska, Michigan State, Wisconsin are some of the deepest in the country at linebacker. All three are in the Big Ten. You have Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers who are projected to start there. Steel Chambers as was at times, and I read this on an article, it said that at times that he was one of the best players on the field, and he's certainly scheduled for possibly a breakout year this coming season. Tommy Eichenberg, watching him on live television in the Rose Bowl, had a fantastic game there, certainly finished out the season well. So linebacker, despite being what I think is going to be a weakness on the field, should still improve compared to this past season where their play was far from acceptable. It'll be a result of obviously Jim Knowles coaching and that 4-2-5 defense. And yeah, that's basically the linebacker core. Don't have a lot to say about them compared to the defensive line and secondary, which I think will be brighter moments there. You have Ronnie Hickman at free safety. This bullet safety position is what he was listed at. He had a few sacks. He led the team in tackles. He was one of the better players at secondary, along with what I would say Denzel Burke. Those are probably the two best players. On a secondary that improved off of a poor 2020 campaign, did did pretty well, though not elite. There was still a lot to be desired from them in 2021. With better coaches, I think they should improve here. You also have Josh Proctor at strong safety. Denzel Burke, who was a freshman, was one of the better corners in the nation, returns, along with Cameron Brown, who is good when healthy, and you have Tanner McAllister, who was ranked as a 93 or 94 in the transfer portal rankings coming from Oklahoma State. And McAllister, this is important too, because he he knows what Jim Knowles' scheme is, He's played under him for years, obviously being from the previous school where Jim Knowles was also the defensive coordinator. He'll be a leader. He's already been described as such and be one of the better players on this defense, someone to hold the rest of the defense accountable, help them learn the new system. Having transfers who are familiar with your new coaching staff schemes are very helpful. This is a way in which I think the transfer portal will benefit some teams, especially these top-end teams who are hiring new coordinators and such, often from more lower-end schools. They're trying to get these rising stars. Jim Knowles definitely being one of those rising coaches in the nation. You wouldn't have heard about him two years ago. Now he is hot news, and for very good reason. And through the transfer portal, you can now get these transfers who are great players from worse schools and bring them to your own. Maybe bring a few players along with the new coach that you hired from the same school, help you adapt to the system quicker, especially when it's a more complex one, and that can certainly help Ohio State's chances to field that great defense that I know their fans and administration want. Because at Ohio State, like most big-time programs, there isn't rebuilding. There is reloading. And I look at the talent here at this projected lineup, and that's exactly what the expectation should be. I mean, half of these guys are five stars, high-end four stars. Almost all of them are four stars, and the three stars that are on here are, at worst, solid players, at best, some of the better players in the country. That's all I have to say for this video. If you like this video on Ohio State's defense, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. 
Once again, like I said at the beginning of the video, tell me what you think Ohio State's defense will look like in 2022, how good you think it will be. Tell me your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.